I want to define risk, a central measure in any financial decision. What is risk? I know if you've taken a finance class, you've been programmed already. You tend to think of risk in terms of statistical terms, variance, volatility, or maybe even Greek alphabets, betas. But my favorite definition of risk is several thousand years old. It's a Chinese symbol for crisis or big risk. The Chinese symbol for crisis or big risk is actually a combination of two symbols, danger and opportunity. Risk is equal to danger plus opportunity. That's the perfect way to think about risk. Risk is neither good nor bad. It's a combination of danger and opportunity. And the reason I like that linkage is we all like opportunity, right? We all want to make 70% returns. And this definition cautions us. It says, look, if you want to make 70% returns, be willing to live with a lot of danger. You don't like danger? Then don't ask for 70% returns. Think of how many mistakes in investing in corporate finance would be avoided if we remembered that linkage. We tend to fall for fads and scams when we think we can be exposed to opportunity without being exposed to danger. So here's how I think about risk and return models in finance. In the first step, we defined risk as the deviation of actual returns around an expected return. What am I talking about? Let me give you a couple of examples. Let's assume you have a one-year time horizon and you buy a one-year U.S. Treasury bond. Let's for the moment assume that the U.S. Treasury has no default risk. If the one-year Treasury bond right now is a yield of half a percent, if at the end of the year of holding period, I came and knocked on your door and asked, how much do you make on your investment? The answer is always going to be half a percent. That is a truly riskless investment where the actual return is always equal to the expected return. Let's move one step up the ladder. Let's assume you buy a 10-year U.S. Treasury bond and you still have a one-year time horizon. At the end of the year, if I come and knock on your door and ask you what return you made on your bond, part of it is going to be certain. The coupon is going to be guaranteed, but the price could have changed because every time interest rates change, prices change. So a 10-year T-bond is not risk-free if you're looking at a one-year time horizon. Now, if you bought a stock, let's say Google, and I came to you at the end of a year and asked you what did you make on the stock, you can be almost guaranteed that you will never make what you expected to make at the start of the period. So if you expected to make a 15% return and you got lucky, you might have made an 80 or 100 or 150% return. If you weren't, you might have dropped 30%. That's a very risky investment. Notice that in all three cases, I defined risk by looking at what happens over the next year. And it's a point I want to emphasize. There is no risk in the past. All risk is in the future. Unfortunately, all our risk measures come from looking backwards. But risk is always in the future. So the first step in every risk and return model in finance is we define risk as the deviation of actual returns around an expected return. And the greater the deviation, the riskier the investment.